Hey, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. This is Brother Patrick, your most extreme, radical favorite brother from another mother. Hallelujah in the name of God. Hallelujah to our God. Every word of worship in one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Hallelujah. He is mighty in battle, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Lord gave me a dream about the rapture. Hallelujah, and a message for you. Praise God. You know, people want to hear the knowledge, but not the wisdom. Hallelujah. Wisdom is what to do with the knowledge that God gives you. Hallelujah. Well, we know that the rapture is near. Hallelujah. By the signs that we see going on in the world with Israel returning as a nation, Israel recapturing the Temple Mount. This is the 100th anniversary of the Balfour document for the white paper from England for Israel to return as a nation. It's the 100th anniversary of the liberation of Jerusalem during World War I by General Allaby through the British Army. It's the 50th anniversary of the restoration and recovery of the Temple Mount of Israel and Jerusalem by the Israeli Army in the Six-Day War. Hallelujah. Praise God, brothers and sisters. And many other signs that we see going on pointing. And that's another video. Everything's pointing to the fact that we are the generation to receive to see the return of our Lord. For Jesus said, this generation that sees these things, Luke chapter 21, this generation shall not pass away to all these things be fulfilled. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So in my dream, brothers and sisters, I've had several dreams about the rapture and they're always very unique in a way that you would never think about. That's one way you know it's from the Lord. You have a dream that lines up with the word of God and it comes at you from an angle you would never think of. It's something that's your own idea. God doesn't need to give you a dream on something you already know. God doesn't need to give you a vision about something you already know. He gives you a dream or a vision or a word that will correct or give you more wisdom or change your way of thinking and let you see things the way God sees things. You know, just like a little child. You know, you could go into an elevator crowded full of people and you're a little kid there. You can't see anything. You're like, well, all I see is <laughs> people's minds. But if your father picks you up, then you can see, you know, all the heads and what's going on in the elevator. You know, you can walk down the streets of New York City, down through Manhattan. You can see the, whatever, those different buildings there, the Chrysler building and et cetera. And you say, wow, it's so tall. You get an airplane, fly over New York City, and you say, wow, the people look like ants. The cars look like little ants. The buildings look just like little toy buildings. When you see things from the way the Father sees things. Hallelujah. Praise God. God reveals these to us when we spend time with Him through prayer, meditating on His Word, or, and through dreams and visions and et cetera. So in my dream, brothers and sisters, of the many rapture dreams I've had over the years, I was going to a wedding. And usually the theme of a lot of rapture dreams are weddings. I was going to a wedding. And there were the thing about this wedding, there were several things. Number one, everyone was de dressed in different colors. You know, I saw a black man dressed in a red suit. And he had on a red tie and a white shirt and a red suit. Then I saw another, an Asian man wearing a green suit and a green tie. And then I, you know, and then uh, I saw people wearing yellow suits and women wearing yellow and green. And they were, you know, were all different colors, of the, like these kind of primary colors, all the different people. That was one part of the dream. And also in the dream, a voice spoke to me because they, they had like the, the center of the wedding and then they had this, the wedding party. And it was just an infinite line of men on one side and women on the other, you know, lined up with these different colored suits. And then... A voice said to me and said, oh, the person that's at the end, the last person in line on each side of the wedding party, because people were trying to get closer, you know, and somebody had to be the last one on the ends of each of the wedding parties. A voice said to me and said, there's a special, or announced it to everybody, you know, like a PA system. The person who is last in each line gets a special award, a special reward. And, I, and in my dream, I didn't, I, I didn't know it was a dream, you know, in my dream... That's the thing about it. Sometimes in a dream you know it's from the Lord. Sometimes you don't. In my dream I didn't know it was from the Lord. I thought I was, you know, in my dream for that moment you think you're really at a wedding. So I was at a wedding and I was like, wow, that's awesome. Because I was trying to get in line too, you know, with all the other people. And didn't know where my place was, kind of milling around there. And then it said, whoever's last in line gets a special reward. I was like, well, that's awesome. And then a minute later the, the PA, the voice said again, whoever's first in line gets a special reward. And I was like, well... Well, that's pretty wild. So either if you're first in line or last in line, you get a special reward. And then the voice said a minute later, everybody in line is going to get a special reward. Everybody gets the same reward. 
And I was like, wow, you know, that is wild. That's awesome, but it doesn't make sense to me, you know. Um, and then, of course, when I woke up, the Lord, you know, the Bible says, those who are last will be first, and those who are first shall be last. And it says, you know, uh, Jesus tells a parable of the owner of the vineyard, and he has uh, workers that go out in the morning. And then the, the, the man who owns the vineyard, he goes in the marketplace and asks more people, why are you just standing around? Come work for me, and I'll pay you, you know. So people come, you know, at 11 a.m., and it tells three, like three times, all the way to 5 p.m., the the owner of the vineyard goes out and gets more people. There's only one hour left. See, there's no lights back then. You know, and so at 6 p.m., it was going to be dark. It's the end of the day. So they lined them up to pay. And then the man who owned the vineyard paid the people that started working at 5 p.m. first. And he paid them one day's wage, one denaria in the, you know, in the Greek. But that's not, you know, uh, in the King James, he gave him one denaria, one day's wages. And then when he came to the people that started at 8 o'clock in the morning, he gave them one day's wage. And they got mad. They're like, you know, one of the guys is like, well, you know, we bore the heat of the day. We've been out here working all day. This guy only worked for one hour. And you gave him the same pay you gave me. And then the owner of the vineyard says, well, you know, are you, uh, I can't do what I want with my own money. Or are you jealous, you know, that I paid this man the same as you? Jesus said the kingdom of heaven would be like that. I don't sit around thinking about that parable too much. You know, I mean, it's not a top thing that I sit around and think about. Unless the Lord would lead me, well, in this case, that's what the Lord is talking about. But the Lord showed me in a backwards way that you would never think about. It's an example of something that God is showing you something because it lines up with the Word of God. It's, it's an illumination, a part of the Word of God for you and it illuminates a truth of God that may be not important to you until the Lord sh- says, hey, look at this. This is important. Hallelujah. So praise God. So what uh, the thing about that is the Lord is showing me one thing, one part of the interpretation is, is that, you know, there's people that's going to get saved all the way up to the rapture. The problem I have with the majority of people that I talk to who are watchers on the Internet, on YouTube, and people on the Internet and YouTube, they're only saying, hey, let's get out of here, let's get out of here, because, hey, I'm ready. But you know what? If it ha- There's a bunch of you guys that got right with God in 2011. Uh, the majority of people that I talk to. There was a big surge of people being awakened in 2011. What if the rapture had happened in 2010? You know, there was millions and millions of people like myself and other people who were already rapture ready 2010. We could have went, you guys would have got left behind. But praise God, the Bible says that God, you know, is long-suffering. He doesn't delay. He's not slack, the Bible says, as men count slackness. But He is long-suffering. And He is very patient because He wants none to perish. He wants all to get right. You know, that's like with the ark. The Lord, you know, it was like 120 years before the, the flood came. And the Lord was patient and merciful to give those people every opportunity. So the people that's going to get saved the day before the rapture are going to be rewarded just like those people that have been saved and right with God for 20 years and 50 years. It doesn't matter. But, you know, I want to add this on here. It's just coming into my mind. We're not talking about the different rewards you get in heaven. There's a judgment seat of Christ and we get different crowns. Like if someone's martyred for the Lord, you know, there's a special crown for that. There's a special crown for those who love the rapture, there's a, you know, there's a crown for being a, a pastor or a teacher, uh, you know, evangelizing people with soul winner's crown. Uh, there's different ones. But the wages of going to heaven and getting to be there and getting raptured and getting up there with the Lord is going to be the reward for all of us that make it to the wedding, brothers and sisters, all who make it to the wedding. Now, the second part of my dream, as I mentioned earlier, there was all these people in different colored suits. And I was like, what's up with that? You know, like I said, in my dream, I didn't know it was a rapture dream or a biblical dream, I was just like, why are all these people, you know, peacocking? You know, they're wearing all these different colors. Usually when you go to a wedding, people are wearing, like there's a color theme. You know, the bride and groom, they have a theme that it's, whatever, lavender, or the last wedding I went to, the color theme was lavender. You know, so white and lavender. Whatever people have. So, you know, and then we see in the Bible, we see people wearing white. You know, the white, the righteousness of Christ. So all these different colors, it wouldn't make sense in that way. But this is what the Lord did. when I, At the end of my dream, when I woke up, I zoomed up high above that, brothers and sisters. That's, this is perfect. Now I know why the Lord had me tell you about that flying in airplanes. See how God is? He's so awesome. I didn't even think about that. God is so awesome. I thank the Lord. He's a lot, I'm not smart enough to come up with the things that the Lord gives me. Praise God. But I was zoomed up in the air, brothers and sisters. And as I was looking down at the wedding party, they were in the form of like a rainbow brothers and sisters and all those different colors from above it was a rainbow brothers and sisters i would have never even think of such a thing 
and never even think to tell you the you know the the parable idea of that when you're walking on the earth those big buildings look tall and then when you fly above it i usually tell people that we're talking about their problems you know your problems seem so big because you're walking among these giants you know the giants representing like the fallen angels the nephilim the, the offspring of the giant of the of the fallen angels you know giants and de, you know demonic attack and your problems or whatever you know represented like david and goliath but if you were to fly above that, you know, so King David, he didn't fly above it physically, but by faith he saw, you know, that he had the victory, that he was much bigger, that his God, our God, his God, the God of Israel, our God is much bigger than Goliath. I mean, there's a whole nother preaching, a whole nother teaching about it. But when God took me up before I woke up, and that's what woke me up, I was looking down, there it was, a giant rainbow, brothers and sisters, hallelujah. And in this last demonic generation, the devil's children, and that's what they are, the Sodomites, children of Satan, have tried to steal the things of God. They tried to steal the rainbow and try to make it represent sodomy, blasphemous, demonic sodomy, to try to steal what God gave us. Hallelujah. And God gave us the rainbow to represent that he's a covenant-keeping God, a promise-keeping God. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has not God, have not God said it? Will he not also, is he not also able to do it? I always have trouble quoting that verse. That's a verse from the Old Testament. Go use the Google and look it up. Brothers and sisters, you can see exactly what the verse I'm alluding to. Hallelujah. Praise God. Referencing. God bless you all, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Every praise is to our God. Something else the Lord had given me on Sunday afternoon. I shared it with uh, uh, one dear sister who's setting up a Zelle for me. I used to have clear exchange. It's a bank to bank transfer thing where, you know, I don't have to share my bank information. You don't share your bank information. There's something called clear exchange. Well, they got bought out. And so I'm in the Philippines. I can't set up a Zelle account, Z-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E, and this dear sister is setting up a Zelle account for me. And it just takes time because there's only a few banks on the list and she's, she's working on it. So any day now, by the grace of God, we will have the Zelle account with a special email address dedicated only for that and i'll be putting it under every video and i'll be announcing it so people can do bank to bank and uh i think as long as we have a zeal account you don't have to have a bank on the list i don't think i don't know all about it because i've just never worked with it anyway brothers and sisters praise god so i was talking to that sister and the lord had given me out of the blue three worldly songs that i that i probably heard when i was a little kid they're like from uh as a matter of fact, one of them was from the time before I was born, and uh, the other two were from the early 70s. I just heard them like at somebody's house on the radio like one time in my life. Heard the song, knew what it was, nowhere in my mind. The Lord had given me these three songs back to back, and as I looked them up, one of them, one of those songs, brothers and sisters, now this was on Sunday, was a song called Those Were the Days My Friend. We would, And it's like from 68. Those were the days, my friend, we thought they would never end. You know, and so the Lord was giving me that lyrics from that song. And it was, I didn't even know that I'd ever, I didn't remember that song. But I was like, yeah, I remember it said from a play or from a movie or something. Where have I heard that song? So I looked it up. I guess I'd heard it on the radio. There's another song called We Had Joy, We Had Fun, We Had Seasons in the Sun. That's another one. And the third one, I can't think of it right now, but it's not in it, slip in my mind. But all three of those songs, the message from the Lord was, is like that song, These Are the Days My Friend, we thought they would never end, but they did end. You know, those days ended. And so what the Lord was trying to, you know, get across to me on Sunday was, is that, you know, we think that, you know, the, you know, for me, like me, I mean, it's not for everybody. Some people's been staring at this guy for years now, waiting for the rapture. I've been busy about my father's business. And I think we should all be, you know, and we can still watch while we're laboring. Most people aren't laboring, they're just watching. And there's going to be an account for that at the judgment seat of Christ. I make videos about that all the time. But for me, I'm like, is it ever going to be over? You know, it, it, you know, it seems like it's never going to end. The, the, the wickedness that's growing in this world. And we know when you read the Old Testament, you see the, the uh, prophets lamenting, uh, you know, like lamentations and Jeremiah and, you know, and the other prophets saying, why is it that the wicked prosper and all these things? And God promises that, you know, the Lord Jesus in the Old Testament, of course, in the New Testament, the Lord Jesus, you know, is supposed to return, which he will, to judge the quick and the dead. That's part of the gospel. We never hear hardly any preacher preaching 
that last part of the gospel. Not only did he die on the cross, rose again on the third day, you know, he's seated at the right hand of the Father, you know, ever making intercessions for us, like the Nicene Creed, they call it. It's basically an outline of the doctrine of Christianity, for, and it is an outline of Christianity. But, it, but, you know, the end part of this is that you never hear preachers preaching is he will return again to judge the quick and the dead. People always focus just on salvation, salvation. But a big part of the, and for this generation, the, a big focus of the gospel, Jesus Christ is coming back to rule this earth with a rod of iron. What do you think that means when he's going to be carrying a rod of iron? He's going to smash the wickedness to evil. It says with the brightness of his appearing and the word of his mouth. It says in Revelation, out of his mouth comes a sharp two-edged sword which the Bible tells us is the Word of God. So just like in the beginning, see, that's, I'm, I, I don't want to teach it in times. You know, in the beginning, God said, let there be light. And you know, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and then the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1 and 14, that's Jesus Christ is the Word of God, it became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the, uh, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Hallelujah. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because He first loved me. You know, there's power. When you start proclaiming the gospel, the power of God shows up, brothers and sisters. When you say it in the name of Jesus, first you have to proclaim the word, and then the Lord confirms His word. If you don't proclaim it, he can't confirm it because you didn't say it. Hallelujah. Praise God. This, as soon as you start saying, in the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is the one who's moving on behalf of His Word. Hallelujah. It's His Word. Jesus is the Word. So in the beginning, God said, let there be light. There was light. All the things God commanded. That was Jesus doing the talking. Just to teach you a little theology, God the Father planned. God the Holy Spirit executed. God the Son spoke, for He is the Word. That's how the Trinity works. So, in the New Testament, at the end, Jesus is coming back and it says He's going to destroy the wicked people that's destroying the earth with the brightness of His appearing and the word of His mouth. So He's going to say something like, you know, go into the pit or, or be gone, you wicked people, or whatever. The Lord's going to speak something. Hallelujah. Just like He did in the beginning. And it's going to be a created power. So we... Praise God, it says in Jude, that we should, the Lord will return with ten thousands of His saints. Hallelujah. We will return with the Lord. Hallelujah. It says we'll be riding white horses, returning with the Lord. When He comes at the end of the tribulation, His church will be riding with Him. Hallelujah. Praise God, we will rule and reign with Him for a thousand years. And when the Lord returns, we are going to physically, visibly see the Lord speak. And it happened, just like at creation. He's going to speak it. And they're going to be thrown in into the fire, or what, and all those things, you know, I'm going into all the theology of it. They're going to be removed from the earth, then the Lord's going to judge them after a thousand years at the great white throne judgment. All those things. The, the, the Mount of Olives is going to split in twain, and the Lord's going to step down on it. Zechariah chapter 14, the Lord will land on top of the Mount of Olives. The mountain will split in twain, and the land will rise up, and all this. It's all there in the Word of God, brothers and sisters. It's going to be awesome. We're going to see, hallelujah, all these, the Lord speak and then see it happen with our own eyes, just like on the day of creation. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's going to be awesome, brothers and sisters. So, the Lord has led me to do more evan evangelism videos to the world. And this is the word I have for those who are mockers of God. Hallelujah. Just like I just saw, the Lord led me to look at this Atlantic magazine. Got a picture of Vice President Pence as Jesus. Blasphemous, demonic wickedness. I have a word from the Lord for you wicked people. Don't ever confuse meekness with... For weakness, even though they sound the same in English, like similar words, you confuse the meekness of the Lord Jesus Christ with weakness. For the Lord is not weak, but strong. Hallelujah, He's the creator of the universe. He spoke it into existence just by speaking it. How much more will He destroy His enemies with the breath of His mouth? Hallelujah, praise God. For the God will put an end to all wickedness. The only reason why this wickedness is prospering is because God spoke the curse on Adam and Eve and on the serpent and on their seed. Hallelujah. And such, till such a time we've been spiritually redeemed, not by the blood of bulls and goats, can redeem no man, but by the blood 
of the one and only begotten Son of the Most High God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who is returning soon to judge the quick and the dead, the living and the dead. Hallelujah. And those wicked people, hallelujah, beware. Be, be on notice from the Most High God. Hallelujah. For God is not changed. He's from everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. He never changes. Hallelujah. In God there is no shadow of turning. No changes in God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what God did in the Bible, He's still doing and He will do again. Hallelujah. We've been spiritually redeemed. Hallelujah. At the cross. But our physical redemption, my dear fellow born-again Christians who are real Christians and true followers of Jesus Christ, we are about to experience the resurrection, hallelujah, when the sons of God will be revealed, even as Paul spoke about in Romans 2,000 years ago, that the whole creation groaneth in travail, that the sons of God would be revealed. What is John chapter 1? Back to John chapter 1, what does it say? It says in there, to them who believe on His name, who believe in Him, to them He gave power to become the sons of God. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus Christ gave us power to become the sons of God because He is the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. Hallelujah. John chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 14. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hallelujah. And we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for you are the way, the truth, and the life. The Lord Jesus Christ. No one comes to the Father except by the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're watching this video right now and you're a Christian, go and make disciples of the nation. Go tell the wicked, never mistake the meekness of the Lord Jesus Christ for weakness. When He came the first time, He was sent on a mission to be have His beard ripped out, to be spit upon, to be mocked and ridiculed with a crown of thorns, to carry His cross up the hill with the help of one man that they put with him, I think his name is Simon, to carry the Cyrene, to carry that cross up to Calvary. And the Lord sa it says in Isaiah 52 that he was marred beyond recognition, that people wouldn't even recognize who he was after he received his beatings and spit upon, ripped, a beard torn out, mocked with a crown of thorns, all the things that the Lord went through and then crucified for us. That was a special mission that the Lord came down here to die in our place on the cross. He's not coming back like that again. That's the biggest problem I have with the crucifix, not only about idolatry, but it portrays Jesus as not as He is, but as He appeared for our salvation. He became sin for us. He was a sacrificial lamb. Even as Jesus said in John chapter 3, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so should the Son of Man be lifted up. And if I be lifted up, I will draw a man to me. Jesus became sin for us. He died for us. And once you've looked upon Him on the cross and believed and received eternal life, Jesus is not there anymore for He is risen. Hallelujah. He's seated on high at the right hand of the Father, make intercession for us as our high priest of the church. He's a high priest making intercession for the church, not for the devil's people, but for the church. Hallelujah. And then he's going to return again, not as the meek and mild Jesus that not even a reed was broken when he spoke and he didn't cause any trouble as it says in Isaiah 52 and 53. But when he comes back, the brightness of his appearing and the word of his mouth is going to destroy all you wicked people. This is your day. This is your hour. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. When you hear His voice, harden not your heart as the children of Israel did in the wilderness. Hebrews chapter 3 and chapter 4. Don't harden your heart to this good news. Hallelujah. Don't let it be bad news for you. You know, I hear a lot of preachers just giving you know, the good news without giving the bad news. The bad news is you're lost and without hope and you're dying in your own your way to hell and then to the lake of fire and you'll be eternally separated from God, from the love of God, from your loved ones. You'll be in hell with the demons and the devil and all the other wicked people, Adolf Hitler, whoever you want to name. That's part of the gospel. But the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. God has given us one way, one opportunity to escape the judgment you deserve. You don't think you deserve judgment? Go read the Ten Commandments. Have you ever told a lie? What do you call when somebody told a lie? You call them a liar. The Bible says every liar has their place in the lake of fire. Have you ever looked on a man or a woman with lust? Have you ever slept with anyone you weren't married to? And you're married or they were married? 
Jesus said, if you look on someone in lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. You're an adulterer and a liar. Have you ever taken anything that didn't belong to you? That's called a thief. Nearly every single person that's listening to me is a liar and an adulterer and a thief. And that's only three. That's only three of the Ten Commandments. God will judge, judge you by that. If you're not forgiven, if you're not covered in the blood of Jesus, you'll be judged by the Ten Commandments. But praise God Almighty. Praise God Almighty if you repent. If you confess your sins, the Bible says, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He is just and faithful to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Praise God. The Bible says that He takes upon our sins and imputes to us and gives us His righteousness. Hallelujah. By grace are we saved through faith. Faith in what? In the finished work of Jesus Christ. He did it all. Hallelujah. Jesus paid it all. Now all to Him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Hallelujah. Praise God, brothers and sisters. You know, I made videos in the past and, and I titled it, you know, Come See a Man on Fire. Hallelujah. I am being used by God as a burning bush in this video. You are like Moses, wandering in the wilderness, out of your calling, not doing what God commissioned you to do and called you to do. You're out there wandering around in the wilderness and you happen to walk by on YouTube and surfing around. And what do you see? You see a burning bush. And you're like, why does this bush keep burning? Hallelujah. Let me inquire into this thing. Hallelujah. Let the Spirit of the Lord speak to you through this burning bush. Hallelujah. May the Lord speak to your heart through this burning bush. Repent of your sins right now. Turn from your wicked ways. Surrender your hard head and hard heart to the Lord Jesus Christ before it's eternally too late. Hallelujah. No man is guaranteed tomorrow. You could, you could die today. You could die... Tomorrow you could be struck by light. You could be hit by a car. You could be in a car wreck like Brother Brian killed in a car wreck the other day. I'm sure he, he didn't plan for that, but it happened. But praise God, he was a born-again Christian. Brothers and sisters, you know, know what tomorrow holds. The rapture could be in the next five minutes. You don't know. You don't know what tomorrow holds. God is the only one that knows. The Bible says it's not even a bird. Jesus said a bird can't even fall to the ground without the Father's permission. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, anybody who comes to me, I will no wise cast them out. It's not about condemnation. That's another thing that's wrong when sometimes preachers preach condemnation. Hallelujah. It's not condemnation. God wants you to have a guilty conscience. A guilty conscience is a good thing. God says killing is wrong. You already knew that. You don't even have to never heard the Bible, never read anything in the Bible. You know in your heart that murder is wrong. You know in your heart that rape is wrong. You know in your heart that lying is wrong. God gave us a consciousness. Hallelujah. Praise God. And a guilty conscience is a good thing. Don't let any lying, lying demonic psychiatrist or psychologist tell you, oh, don't worry about feeling guilty. Here, take these pills and get high. And it's all about your happiness. No, it's not. It's all about God and bringing glory to God. And as a result of you surrendering to God, out of His grace and mercy, He decided for whatever reason, for His sovereign will to give you eternal life and let you live with Him in heaven and me. God didn't have to make heaven for us. God didn't have to die on the cross for us. He created. He didn't even have to create us. And when He created us, He could have done like those deist thing, like Thomas Jefferson was a deist who thinks that God wound up a clock and walked away. That's what they believe. That's not true. My God is a personal God. I have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will not speak of Himself, but the things He hears. Hallelujah. Where's the Holy Spirit at? The Holy Spirit's in my heart because I'm a born-again believer. And I'm also a Spirit-filled and operate in the gifts of the Spirit. But when you're saved, you have that wellspring, John chapter 4, living water in your heart, and you can hear from God, hallelujah, through His Word, and by the quickening of His Word, and God can speak to you in your spirit by a still, small voice, hallelujah. And God, I have a personal relationship. The Lord, He walks with me, and He talks to me, and He tells me that I'm His own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known, hallelujah. It's a personal, individual relationship. God speaks to me what means what to me. And He speaks to you what means certain things to you. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. The lyrics from that song, In the Garden. Hallelujah. I come to the garden alone. Yeah. No, I don't need a mediator. There's one mediator between God and man. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the joy I hear <laughs> and the voice I hear Falling on my ears, the sound of God disposes. And He walks with me and He talks with me. 
And he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. That's right. My relationship to the Lord is different than your relationship with the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the thing about God. He's so awesome. He can talk to all of us at the same time. God's not stressed. He's not worried. Hallelujah. God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's omnipotent, all-powerful, omniscient, all-knowing. Hallelujah. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above. And He's about to reign on the earth. Hallelujah. When He comes by after the tribulation. Hallelujah. With wisdom, power, and love, our God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. Want you to turn your heart to the Lord. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of His glorious grace. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you right now, Lord God. We know, Lord, every one of us, that we have sinned and fallen short of thy perfect glory, Lord God. We know we've sinned. We know we've done all those things, Lord. Lord, we just confess them to you now. Go ahead, pause this or whatever and begin anything that's in your heart. Confess it to the Lord right now. Tell him you're sorry for looking at pornography or adultery or drugs and getting drunk and lying and cheating and stealing, whatever. Just pause this video and just call upon the name of the Lord. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Call them out if the Lord leads you to individually. If you can't remember them, you know, if it's not in your heart, don't worry about it. It just says if the Lord leads you to confess of anything specific, do it. Hallelujah. Father, we ask you for your forgiveness of all of our sins in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lord, we're sorry for the things we've made it. Because it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Anyway, brothers and sisters, continue to pray. Call the name of the Lord. Ask Him to forgive your sins. Ask Him to come into your heart. Ask Him to save you. Do it in your own words. That old sinner prayer thing when people keep just repeating what someone told them, it needs to come from your heart. You cry out to the Lord. Call upon Him. This, you don't have to say some specific magic formula. Lord Jesus, save me. Forgive me. Deliver me, Lord Jesus. Now, it's not complicated. God's not, God, God knows your heart. Don't let anybody get you caught up. You've got to do magic formulas. It's not about that. People just babbling and repeating stuff. Jesus said don't keep praying repetitive prayers like the pagans. Speak to the Lord from your heart. It's like you're talking to me. I'm talking to you. Lord Jesus, help me. Save me. Show me the way, what I need to do. Everybody's got, sometimes you've got things you've got to get straightened out of your life. Whatever it is, get off drugs, whatever. The Lord will lead you. He'll make a way. He's a way maker. He's the way and the way maker. Hallelujah. Praise God. Anyway, brothers and sisters, and I wanted to add this, that, you know, the Lord's return is near. And the Lord told me, you know, get out there and win the loss because the time of the Gentiles, the fullness, when the gospel's preached to the whole world and the last Gentile gets saved, that's when we're out of here. And that is our commission. That's our mission to go. We don't have to keep waiting for signs in the heavens and all that and waiting on special words and all that. The Lord already gave the great commission in the gospel. Go and make disciples of the nations. Now get out there and tell people about the gospel. God's going to empower you. The Lord will empower you. You know, Peter didn't walk on the water until he stepped out there. If he'd stayed in the boat, like the other disciples, he wouldn't have walked on the water. You've got to step out on the water. Then the Lord's going to sustain you. The power comes. In other words, if, if, if I'm a weightlifter and I'm just sitting around in a chair, then I don't need power to lift weights. It's when I actually pick up the weights that the power is there for what I'm doing. When I cut off the, if I don't have the light switch on, the power's there, but it's not on. I got to flip the switch for the power to come on. So the light will come on. You got to, you got to move. You got to go. You got to do whatever God called you to do. Get out there and do it. You want to be raptured so bad? Do your part. God, you know, you could be the reason why we haven't been raptured. Because you're supposed to go, 
You know, tell your cousin about Jesus today. I don't know. God knows as an example. God bless y'all, brothers and sisters. Praise God. Ask for your prayers. We prepare for the end of the year. You know, the orphans, we're getting them by the grace of God. We'll have all the budget we need to get them some new mattresses and shoes and toothbrushes and give them all a present and, and, and all the things. And in the feeding programs, a thousand kids that we want to have special food for them. And we, every year for the last several years, we've been getting boxes through Sister Pearlie in Chicago. We didn't do it this year. Uh, I guess well, I haven't talked to Sister Pearlie. She's been, she's been busy, but I plan on doing it for school starts here in June. So by the grace of God, we can do boxes in January, February and get them sent out by March. It takes two or three months to get here and do boxes with school supplies and things like that. As you guys pray about it, all the, the information for Sister Pearlie, her email and Facebook is below every video. If you want to send some stuff like that, clothes, school, children's, summer clothes, school supplies, anything that's not really perishable, you know. Kids' toys that are not perishable is nice, anything like that. But we can buy cheap toys here, so, you know, it's no need in sending, like, cheap little things. But if you had some nice toys like that your kids don't play with anymore, you would give to Goodwill. Those would be nice because you can't get those here. Here they've got just cheap little raggedy toys, you know, that so if someone sent that, I mean, I could buy it here and it's cheap and it's going to break, right? But if you have some nice something that's already been, you know, like from your kids, grandkids or whatever that nobody's using, you're just going to give it to Goodwill, you could send it to Sister Pearlie. You know, that would be nice because, like I said, you can't even get those things here. So it would be huge to give out to the feeding programs or even to the orphans, whatever, you know. we uh, The orphans are getting, most of them are getting pretty big now. We only got two kids that are like, preschool, you know, under the age of school. Uh, but the feedings, we have lots of little children, two, three, four years old, whatever, you know, so ba little toys and stuff. But anyway, God bless y'all, brothers and sisters. God bless and praise God. We hope to be seeing you in the air. Uh, I got an opportunity to go for a few weeks in January to the States. There's, you know, somebody wants me to come meet with them, an individual person. And, uh, you know, so, and it's a big, kind of a big, Thing with them, special situation for healing. Ask you guys to pray about that, and then I'm not sure. I'm praying whether I'll go or not, and then maybe I can meet some more of you guys if I'm going to make that far of a trip. Make the most of it. Ask you guys to pray about it, too. Get back with me, and uh, God bless you all. God bless you all.